Hey guys, so in this video I want to go over a few more uh, roller coaster problems and really touch up on the classic types of questions you might be asked that have to do with energy. Let's check it out. So um, this example here, it's going to be a four part example. I'm going to, in the same situation, ask you for four different things. It says a roller coaster cart without seat belts. Without seat belts means that the person or whatever is in it could fall, right? And that's important, and we'll talk about that in a little bit. Goes around a loop the loop of radius r. So this thing here has a radius r. Okay? Remember, this means that this is r and this is r. Therefore, the height here at the bottom, I can call this the height 2, I can call this 0. And this height here, height at point 3, I can call this 2r because we're at the top of the circle. Okay, We want to derive an expression for all of these four different things here. For the first part, I want to know what is the minimum speed that you need at the top of the loop. In other words, what is the minimum speed you need here? V3, uh, V3 min equals question mark. Um, so that the cart makes it without passengers falling. The passengers could fall because they are without seat belts and you need to do this without falling. Okay? Um, if, the, if the passengers had seat belts, your velocity at the top could be as close as zero. They wouldn't fall as long as they had seat belts and the cart was locked to the track and then it would just go around like this. Uh, but because they have no seat belts and we want to do this without them falling, this velocity here cannot be zero. So V3 is not zero. Zero is too slow. You would fall, in fact, even before you got to the top. Okay? Zero is too slow. Now, I want to remind you that when we have a circular path, there are two ways of solving these problems, two situations. First one is a situation that talks about one point only. And if that's the case, we're going to deal with it using um, the centripetal F equals ma. If it's a situation that deals with two points, then we're going to use the energy equation. F equals ma always deals with one point, um, a single point. An energy equation always deals with initial to final, therefore two points. In this question, um, which one do you think I have? Do you think I'm referring to only one point or to two points? I hope you picked, I hope you said, one point, so we're going to use F equals ma. And that's because I'm saying how fast do I have to be at the top so that I don't fall or passengers don't fall at the top. So it's only making reference to one point. So we're actually going to solve this using F equals ma. Sum of all forces equals ma. All right. Um, how many forces are here? Well, the cart is sort of inside here, right? The cart's backwards. So obviously you have an mg pulling down. But you also have a normal force pulling, uh, pushing down, right? Because the track is pushing, the cart's pushing against the track at the top, so the tr track pushes down against the cart. When you have a cart going around a roller coaster loop like this, the normal force is always pushing you towards the middle. Okay, and here the middle happens to be going down. So there are two forces, they're both towards the middle. Remember when we're dealing with centripetal forces, forces towards the middle are positive. Okay? So I'm going to put here plus m plus n equals mac. Now, one thing that might be weird about using f equals ma to solve this problem is that we're looking for a velocity, and yet you may not find a velocity here. You don't see a v anywhere there, but that's because you're supposed to rewrite a as v squared over r. Now, I have a v that I can solve for. Okay? Cool. And that's what we need to get. We need to solve for V here. Now, one of the things, one of the key things about this question is that normal is supposed to be zero. Normal at the top is zero. That's what without passengers falling gives you. It tells you that the normal equals zero. This is a little bit counterintuitive, a little bit backwards. Because if normal is zero, normal is zero when you're no longer touching um, the surface that you're pushing up against. So, for example, in the case of passengers, it's if your butt is no longer touching the seat, you come off the seat, your normal is zero. Well, wouldn't that mean that you're falling? It is, actually. It does mean that you're falling. The way we're going to answer this question is by finding out 
at what velocity you would start to fall and that is the minimum velocity. It's almost as if you want to find out what you don't want to do um, so that you don't do it. So you begin falling um, at whatever velocity you get when your normal at the top is zero. So it's backwards. You don't want to fall, but the boundary condition, the extreme case, is when normal is zero. That's where you would start falling. If that number is a 10, then that means that you should probably move with an 11 or a 12 just to be safe. Uh, but the answer we would give, the minimum velocity in this case, would be a 10 for that example that I just gave. Okay? So the normal at the top has to be zero because if you were to fall at the limiting condition where you would fall, um, you would no longer, your butt would no longer touch the seat, so there would be no normal force acting on you. Okay? So this becomes zero. All right? Um, now we can solve this. Mg equals mv squared over r. The masses cancel, and V becomes the square root of G R. And that is the answer for part A, simply the square root of G R. Okay? Another way, a little bit faster maybe, that you could have solved this, so this is the full solution, but something a little bit faster you could have done, I'm going to put an or here as an alternative, is you could have thought of it in the following way. If you're at the top and your butt doesn't touch, you're falling. And if you're falling, then you are free falling, um, which means that your acceleration is just gravity. Now, you are sort of going in a circle, except that at that point you would fall. So I can rewrite this acceleration AC as a V squared over R equals G, which then gives me V equals the square root of G R. Okay? Um, and that's kind of what I had here. G equals V squared over R is the same thing as saying G equals AC, which should make sense. If you're falling, um, your, ex your, gra your acceleration is just gravity. So this is a little bit shorter, a little bit faster to get. So whenever you have a problem that says, what is the minimum speed at the top so you don't fall, um, you could start with F equals MA and set normal to zero. Or you could say, well, if I'm falling, if I don't want to fall, I have to set it up as if I did fall. And in that case, if I did fall, then I can say that AC equals G. Okay? Um, again, this is kind of weird. If the answer here came out to be a 10, this means that at 9.999, you would certainly fall. At 10.0001, you would certainly not fall. Uh, and 10 is just the minimum number in between falling and not falling. Okay? Hopefully that made sense. Um, again, normal at the top is zero, or AC equals G is what you would set up in a problem like this, okay? Now, for part B, I'm asking what is the minimum speed needed at the bottom? So what is V, bottom is point two here, V2 minimum that you need at the bottom of the loop, that's point two, so that the car reaches the top, that's point three, with the speed found in A. So what is V2? so that you get to the top with a V3 found in A. What we found in A was the square root of GR. What must be V2 so that I get to point 3 with the velocity of GR? And I want to go back here and ask you guys to think about this real quick. Do you think I'm going to use energy or am I going to use F equals MA? Or I said that in backwards order. Am I going to use F equals MA or energy? Well, here I clearly have two points. I'm saying what must this be so that I get to this with this speed. So I'm talking about two different points. Because I'm talking to about two different points, I have to use the energy equation to solve this. And I'm going to write an energy equation from 2 to 3. So K2, U2, work non-conservative, equals K3, U3. And I warn you, it's going to be a little messy, just because we have a lot of variables. Uh, but the most important part is obviously figuring out which types of, of uh, energies we have. There is kinetic energy at point two because I have to obviously have a speed down here so that I get to the top. There's no potential energy at point two because we're on the floor. The work done by non-conservative forces is the work done by you or some sort of engine or external force or applied force. Uh, we're going to assume that there's none of that and that once the cart starts at the top, it just rolls uh, without, an en without uh, any kind of en um, engine pushing it forward. It just rolls because it had some initial height and then it keeps going uh, due to conservation of energy. There is no friction also. Most 
roller coaster problems won't have friction. There's no reference to friction here, so we can certainly ignore it. Um, is there kinetic, kinetic energy at 0.3? There is because the velocity at 0.3, remember, is not zero, um, but instead it's this. So there is kinetic energy there, and there is potential energy as well. Now let's just expand this. Half mv2 squared equals half mv3 squared plus mgh3. Notice the masses cancel. I have two uh, terms here with halves. I don't like fractions, and I'm going to make things simpler here by multiplying everything by 2. Multiplying this 2 with this half cancels out this half, so I end up with v2 squared cancels this half as well. So I end up with v3 squared uh, plus there's no half here, so there's a 2gh3. Okay, 2gh3. Um, let's, uh, let's take this over here. V2 is what we're looking for. I'm going to circle it. V3 I'm given, it's the square root of gr. So, and then I have to square that, right? So I'm squaring V2, V3, and V3 is the square root of gr, plus 2gh3. The height at point 3 is 2r, I mentioned here because it's at the top of the perfect circle, so it's twice the radius, or once the diameter, uh, but we always use radius in physics, so you get that there. Um, v2 squared, this is going to simplify the square of a square root, it just gets, cancels out like this, plus 4gr, so obviously if you combine this, this is 5gr, and the final answer is that v2 is the square root of 2, I'm sorry, 5gr. You might remember um, that very often you get something like velocity is the square root of 2gh, um, but instead of a 2, I have a 5, instead of a g, uh, actually the g is there, and instead of an h, I have an r, but the r is used to explain, uh, to describe the height here. We're saying that the height at the top is 2r. So it's pretty similar in form, uh, and that gives us an indication that this is probably right, and that is, in fact, your final answer for this part. Okay, uh, let's keep going here. It says find the minimum height h. Okay, so that's another another classic question here. Find the minimum height h that the hill shown point one must have so that you get to top to the top with the speed you found in a. So again, we want to get to the top here. The minimum speed here that we want is the square root of gr. That's what we found in part a. Part b said, well, how fast do you have to be in part in point two? So that you get to the top with that speed. And now the next question is, how high must this point be? Um, what is the minimum height that you need here so that you do get to the top with um, this speed? Okay. Once again, we're talking about two points. So I'm asking, what is the height of A so that you get to V3 with the speed of the square root of GR? Two points. So I'm going to use the energy equation um, to do this, okay? I'm going to leave a little bit of space to draw in case we have to, um, since we can't see the drawing from here. So kinetic, um, this is at point one, actually. So uh, one is my unknown, three is my known, so I'm going to go write the energy equation from one to three. K1, um, U1, work non-conservative, K3, U3. Okay, so what is the minimum speed? The first question, I'm going to draw this here real quick. Okay, the diagram did indicate that this speed here is a little bit higher. I mean, the, the height here is a little bit higher than number three. Okay, um, so what's the speed at number one? The speed at point one, it's not given to you, and it will be zero. And I don't know if you've noticed, but there's sort of this trend that if you don't know what a number is and there's no way to get it, um, very often it's just zero, right? So you could think of zero first and then try to justify it with why it's zero. Well, here's the idea. Let's say this height here is 10 meters. And when you, and then you leave, um, let's see, you leave from here, and the velocity you need here is five meters per second. If you start here with an initial velocity of zero, and you get here with a velocity of six meters per second, that means that it was more than what you needed, which means this could have been a little bit lower, 
right? The higher this is, the higher this height, the faster you're going to be here. So that's one of the one of the things that we can set it up. Now, the other setup that's more important is the following. If if this has a height of 10 meters and I have to get here with 5 meters per second, right? If the only way to do this is by having an initial velocity here of 2 because otherwise you're not going to get here with a 5, then this means that this height has to be greater. Okay? It means that 10 meters is not cutting it if on top of it I also have to give you an initial push. So by asking the minimum height, what's kind of implied here is what minimum height do I need in such a way that this uh, cart requires no initial velocity, that just simply barely rolling from it will be enough. Okay, So that implies that the initial velocity has to be zero and therefore there is no kinetic energy in the beginning. Okay, let me clean this up a little bit. So what's tricky about these questions is there's all these implications that you have to be able to get to or you have to know how to do them. Okay, um, so potential energy, obviously there's a potential energy here because I have a certain height. Work by non-conservative forces will be zero because there's no work done by you or an engine or an external force, applied force, and there's no friction either in this path. There's no reference to any of that stuff. Um, there is a kinetic energy at point 3 because there's a speed and there's a potential energy at point 3 as well because there is a height. So let's expand this equation here. I have mgh, I have mgh1 equals half mv3 squared plus mgh3. The masses cancel and we're looking for h1. So let's start simplifying some stuff here. Um, gh1 half, I know the velocity at 3, the velocity at 3 is this here. So I'm going to replace that here. Now be careful, realize there's a square here. So it's going to be the square of the square root, like that, plus gh3. I also have an expression for h3. Um, we discussed this earlier. This is going to be twice the radius of this thing here. So 2r, okay, now I just have to clean this up a little bit and solve for h1. gh1 equals half, this square root cancels with the 2, half gr plus, this is 2gr, okay. Um, notice that the g's cancel because I have g's everywhere. Whoops, I canceled the 2, not the g. And then here I have half r plus 2r, and half plus 2 is 2.5. So I can just put 2.5r, and that's my h1. So let me just clean it up over here. h1 is 2.5r. Okay. Um, I want to show you this in terms of um, relative to all these heights. This is 0. This is 2r right there, and this has to be 2.5r, so just a tiny bit um, taller than the height at number 3. That should make sense because the velocity at 3 is not 0, um, so this has to be a little bit higher so that when I get all the way around and then I come back to point 3, since 3 is a little bit lower than 1, um, I haven't consumed all the speed. I still have some speed here as I should so that passengers don't fall, okay? So that's the third one, um, and these three are really um, show up a lot in, a lot in, in, in more, um, in tests where your professor puts a lot of emphasis in these roller coaster problems. Um, I would say D is probably the least likely to show up, um, the least common at least, but this is another one of the variations you may have. So let's try this. I wanna know what is the force that the track exerts on the cart at the top of loop, at the loop, so point 3. So if you're here, what is the force that the cart, that the track will exert on the cart? The force that the track exerts on the cart is the normal force. So I want to know what is the normal at point 3 if the cart gets there with double the speed found in A. The speed we found in A was the square root of GR. So I'm asking, if I get to point 3, with the V3 
of double that, right? So I want V3 to be double what I found. Um, this is GR, not 2G. So if the speed is double, what we, the speed we found in A, which is this, if that's the case, then what will be, um, what will be the force that the track exerts on the carts? The force that the track exerts on the carts is normal, okay? Now, am I going to use F equals MA or energy? Well, F equals MA is for one point, energy is for two points, and even though this is making a reference to answer in part A, that still has to do with the speed at point three. I'm telling you if V3 is this, what will be N3? Both of these numbers or both of these variables are referring to the same point. This is a single point problem with circular motion. So we're gonna solve this using F equals MA. One point, which means we're gonna solve this using F equals MA centripetal. Uh, remember, when you're in the top of a circle, the forces on you are mg and normal, okay? So they're both positive because they're both going, uh, well, in the case of a cart, both forces are down, right? Uh, because the cart spins on the inside, and they're both positive because they're go both towards the center. Um, mac. Now, I don't have a, I have v, so I'm going to replace A with V squared over R, and we do this a lot in uh, these problems. Okay? So I'm looking for N, so I have to replace everything else. I'm going to move MG to the other side, and it's going to look like this. MV squared over R minus MG. Now I can still clean this up a little bit more because N3 depends on V3, and I have an expression for V3. So let's do that. M V3, the whole thing is squared and then divided by R minus mg. This here will be V3, which is two. Again, it's the double of the original velocity we found. So two square root of GR. Okay, I'm gonna take this over here and we're almost done. Whew. N3 equals M. The two becomes a four and the square root of GR, one squared becomes just GR. That's divided by R, which means this R cancels with this R, minus mg. N3 equals, if you multiply all this, um, it equals 4mg minus mg. So that's just 3mg. So the track will push on you, or, or on the carts, with three times the force of the weight of the carts in this situation. Okay? Um, and that's because you're going faster than the minimum. If you go with the minimum speed not to make it, you're barely touching the top because you're barely making it, so your normal is zero. But if you go a little bit faster, you're now pushing against the top, right, because you're going faster, um, and the top will then push back against you, okay? So these are the four types of questions you might see. Um, hopefully this made sense, very comprehensive. Let me know if you have any questions.